Welcome to Moving Conversations, a podcast for movement professionals by movement professionals. If you coach, train, or teach movement, Pilates, or fitness, then this podcast is for you. With more than 60 years of experience in fitness and Pilates, your hosts, Brian Ritchie and Nora St. John, explore the science of human movement, diving deep into the facts, myths, and common misconceptions, hoping to spark a thought and conversation about how we view fitness and movement. Now, let's jump into Moving Conversations. And welcome back to Moving Conversations. I'm Brian Ritchie. Joining me, as always, is Nora St. John. Nora, how are you doing this morning? Quite well, Brian. We're having a little bit of technical issues over here on my end, but other than that, we seem to be fine. We're going to do a little bit of a short session today, I think, because of that. Um, not a problem. Not a how problem. Are you doing? doing good. Doing good. We we started last week uh, with a brand new platform, so hopefully this platform is going to be working. We are working out some technical difficulties. Uh, the nice thing about this is we're also going to have video that's that we can upload as well onto the YouTube channel so you can see our wonderful faces if you choose to do so. Uh, but in case we want to show something, demonstrate or, you know, show any pictures, this is a good opportunity that we have an op an option that we can do that uh, through this medium. So and also for our friends uh, across the pond uh, in both directions that want to watch us on YouTube, that want to watch closed captions, it gives them that, those options. So, exactly. yeah. So today we're going to cover sprains and strains. Uh, we were going to do just ankle sprains. I think we're going to cover that next week. I think let's yeah. lay down some groundwork and a foundation and just try and get through sprains and strains and see where we get with that. Excellent. All right. So today's going to be a shorter session and that's okay because I don't think this is going to be too long of a dis of a discussion. Uh, so let's jump right in. Uh, so many people have come to me and said, you know, hey, I torqued my back. I, pr I pulled it. I sprained it. I strained it. Da, 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 da. And they don't really know what they're talking about. Let's face it. It's not a diagnosis saying you, you tweaked something. Right. So right. let's talk about true diagnosis here of the difference between a sprain and a strain. So let's start with that. Yeah. So yeah. again, strain and sprain, unfortunately, sound a lot alike. So there is, that's just a problem. Just, just, yes. It is. Yes. We're going to stumble over this a little bit. I have a feeling. You know, that one little, that one little consonant can make us trouble. So a strain usually refers to muscle tissue damage, right? So if I have a muscle strain and mm -hmm. I'll have a ligament sprain. Right. So, so yes, those, and now the challenge there, of course, is those tissues are quite related. So a strain, right, can be in the muscle belly itself. It can be at the muscular tendinous junction. Um, we talked, you know, last week about tendinitis and tendinosis. So if you think about it fascia, there's this continuity from the connective tissue of the tendon through the muscular tendinous junction where the muscles and tendon come together through to the muscle belly itself. So, and, and it's funny, we don't call, we call tendinitis a tendinitis or tendinosis, right? right? So, um, so again, a strain is generally considered to be in the belly of the muscle or more in the muscle tissue than in the tendinous tissue or any associated ligaments in that joint or around that joint area. What's interesting with this is if it's in the muscular tendinous junction, uh, it could easily be diagnosed as either the tendinitis yes. or a muscular strain, yes. you know, it can sort of go back and forth and I mean, I've seen one start as a strain and then eventually sort of creep into becoming more tendinitis oriented. Absolutely. Because again, these are not separate tissues. Right. You know, we've talked about this on and off and it's certainly when we've talked about fascia. These, these tissues are completely interconnected. The muscle tissue and to take it a little more specifically, a little more technically, right? The fascial coating around each of the muscle fibers and then each of the round, you know, the, the, the paramecium, et cetera, all of those really come down and merge to form that tendon and mm -hmm. the connective tissue within the tendon, right? All that is continuous. So obviously if there's damage in the muscle or in the muscle belly, for example, there's also going to be a related experience in those tendinous tissues because they're continuous in terms mm -hmm. of the fascia. Now, when someone says that they've torn a muscle, could they be talking about a muscle strain? Uh, we talked last time I've torn, you know, the muscle in my forearm tendon in the flexor uh -huh. tendon, mm -hmm. uh, pulled a little bit of it off the bone. So that's completely different. But if you did say cause slight muscle tear within the belly of the muscle, would that be considered a muscular strain? 
Yes. Okay, so that is. Right? Yes. So, and again, that's where things get fuzzy. Like I think about what you just said, which is essentially an avulsion fracture, mm -hmm. right? Where the tendon pulls off something. Mm -hmm. Or I think about um, a number of clients I've worked with who have a tear at the muscular tendinous junction between the gastroc and the Achilles tendon. Right. Which right. is a really pretty common spot to have a little bit of a tear. Yep. And, you know, is that, I mean, it's not in the tendon necessarily. It's not in the muscle belly. It's kind of in between the two. So is it a muscle strain or is it a tendon tear? Right. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where that, how they, how they delineate that or even if they can delineate that, those kinds of things. You know, That's what I was going to say. We've talked about uh, things like uh, sciatic, sort of this garbage diagnosis. Right. Yeah. I've kind of put, I know what a sprain is. Yes. When it comes to a strain, it's always in my head sort of like, well, we, we're not, they're not 100% sure. And unless you do imaging of some sort where you can actually see a tear, where you can see muscular damage, I often wonder if that gets that same sort of, I hate to use the term, but garbage diagnosis just as a catch-all for, well, it's not in the ligament, it's within the muscle, and especially if it's within the muscle belly. So it's just, we're going to call it a strain. That's, that's kind of how I see it because it's it's really used like, I see it a lot in low back pain. Mm -hmm. Like I have a low back strain, right? Yes. Whatever that means. Um, I have a, a, a gastroc strain, a hamstring strain. And sometimes that's yep. really what's happening. And, you know, again, I think it sort of means we've ruled out the other things. I think it often means yep. we've ruled out a tendonitis, we've ruled out um, some ligament damage. And so we're going to leave it as a strain. So I, I think that's, I don't know, I think that's fair. Somebody else out there may have uh, more insight into how the medical profession actually deals with this. But my experience has been uh, when, when it's not obviously this or that, they kind of throw it in the strain bucket. And I think way back when, let's talk 30 years ago and be, and even prior to that, they didn't have the same imaging and techniques that we do now. So now we could do yeah. ultrasound. Now we could do MRI and we could actually see if there is tissue damage within the belly of the muscle. We could actually see that and diagnose that differently. The doctor may diagnose that as a slight tear or give you a more specific diagnosis rather than a strain. But previously, really, besides x-rays, there wasn't a whole lot more that they could do. So it was just like, ah, oh, it's in the muscle. You strained it. You pulled exactly. it. Exactly. And then you get into muscle or you get into tendon, I'm not sorry, ligament sprains. Yeah. But a sprain is specifically in the ligaments. Yep. And so that is a different tissue, right? The strain is more in the muscle, maybe into the tendon or some relationship there. And sprains are specifically in um, ligaments. So the ligaments that hold the knee together, the ligaments that hold yep. the ankle together. Uh, you know, people commonly sprain their ankles or they sprain their thumbs. Like people get yep. thumb, you know, hand sprains in various ways or wrist sprains because they land on it funny or they, you know, hyperextend it or something like that. And let's look at the anatomically, uh, mm -hmm. just covering all bases here. Uh, when we're talking about tendon and muscle, it's usually the tendon attaches to the bone, you know, to a muscle. Whereas right. ligament attaches a bone to a bone. So right. there's, and the main difference is, is that the ligament is avascular. You don't have much blood supply, if any blood supply to a ligament, whereas to the tendon, because it's a muscle, there's a lot more blood supply there. So that's going to heal a lot more rapidly and essentially could be as good as new. You know, there's a possibility that it could re repair itself so that you won't even know two years down the road, you're not even going to remember you had that muscle strain, but a ligament sprain, that's a different animal. Right. And all of these have, there's different degrees too. So, you know, just to, to, to bring that into it too, both for sprains and for strains, there's, there's a sort of a grade one or whatever, where there's a few tissues torn, a few fibers torn, if you will, whether it's the muscle or it's the ligament. Um, and then there's like a grade two or more of it is. And then there's also a complete rupture where yeah. you've actually torn the muscle in half or you've torn the ligament in half and it's no longer uh, attached to itself. And those are all, those are also slightly different situations. Um, right. Remember too, that ligaments are designed to be range limiters mm -hmm. or range allowers, but basically they determine a lot of the stability of a joint. You know, it's like, yeah. it's only going to let your elbow go so far. It's only going to let your knee go so far into extension. It's only going to let, you know, your ankle move so far if it rolls over.
right? That's what the yeah. ligament is going to limit that. I love so that term. You, yeah. So, so when you lose ligament, you lose some stability around that joint. Yeah. That's how right. I learned a lot more about ligament structures is like you said, there's the grades, grades yeah. one, you know, first time someone sprains something, usually it'll come back to almost as good as new. It's a grade one sprain or str so it's not that big a deal. It'll often, you know, return back to fairly as normal. Yeah. Upon repetition, continuously spraining over and over and over again can lead to a grade two, a grade three, where even though you don't even have a complete rupture, you can actually have it be so uh, loose that the ligament is stretched out so far that you lack stability in that joint from there, there on in. You know, it never returns back to its original length. Right. One thing I think, like I use an image and I, I, I use this on, I, Brian, I've, I've done some video work together where like, if you think about a ribbon, okay, you've got a ribbon and if you cut a little piece of that ribbon, right, that it doesn't change length too much. Mm -hmm. If you cut halfway through, it'll often be able, you'll be able to stretch it a little bit farther just because some of those fibers are going to end up now being able to go a little farther than they were. And the more you cut it, the longer that ligament will get right mm -hmm. until it's it's completely torn so uh and and some of that damage like some of it will like ligaments will heal or they can heal to some extent they can scar up a bit anyway sure right so if you have a little tiny tear it can scar up perhaps the body does some healing in that process and that can tighten it back up again and for some people it does for some people it doesn't or for some people the damage is extreme enough that they really lose the stability of that ligament it happens mm -hmm. a lot in the knee. Think about intercruciate ligament sprains, or, or I mean sprains, or um, medial collateral ligament sprains, or ankle sprains. Any lot. of those circumstances um, can lead to lack of stability in those joints. Well, we see it a lot also in the SI joint ligaments. Yes. Yep. Because especially upon pregnancy, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone the first time they get pregnant with the relaxin, those ligaments stretch out. And the first pregnancy, oftentimes from what I've seen, they go back and they go back to about where they were before and everything seems to be happy and healthy. Yeah. But upon the second and third and fourth child, again, repetition, that even though it has relaxant, it's stretching it out, but it doesn't always go back in. I say it's like two puzzle pieces that were supposed to be locked perfectly together. Yes. Now are kind of crooked. They're not going back 100%. Yeah. And those ligament structures don't tighten up as much as maybe they once did. And yeah. now they have one side or the other is a little looser. One side may be a little bit dysfunctional. So we see that in a lot of clients who are a lot of women who have had multiple births. Absolutely. Now the SI joint is a, a really classic example of, of a ligament sprain. Um, and really it, it can be acute. This, as you said, with pregnancy or even with, um, you know, ligaments develop and the length of the ligament develops as we grow up, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of joint shape or joint mobility is formed by what we're doing when we're growing up. So I think about a lot of the dancers that I work with, um, or I think of the pitchers too, those two things, or tennis players, where, where a, a large range of motion is required in certain areas, right? So for pitcher, it's your shoulder, for dancers, typically your hips. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you start at the age of four or five or six or seven or eight, um, doing a whole lot of mobility work to get hip extension, which is a dancer you would do, or to get external rotation of your shoulder if you're a pitcher, um, over time, that the ligament structure will adapt to that work that you're doing, mm -hmm. right? So that, that also can lead to how the ligaments develop is often related to you know, how you grow up. So then once you get an injury, a lot of that just either can compound that you know, or not, because you, you create the ligament structure of your adulthood as you're growing up. Yeah, we see this a lot in baseball pitchers yeah. uh, who need Tommy John surgery, that ulnar collateral ligament. You know, they're, they're pitching. If you've ever seen a pitcher or even a volleyball player, the amount of external rotation that their arm can go back so far, well, eventually the humerus is going to stop. Mm -hmm. But at that young an age, things are still stretching. They're still sort of mobile and I almost want to say a little more elastic than they would be if they were in their twenties or thirties and well, then the ligaments collateral ligaments. Shapes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they're still modeling. They're yes. still remodeling at that age. 
So if you keep torquing it, that ulnar collateral ligament can, can continue to stretch. And then when they are in their 20s, when they are pitching at a higher level, they're still requiring and asking so much of that stretch that yeah. eventually they have very little control in their pitch. And that's what happens is they say, mm -hmm. I don't feel bad, you know, but I feel a little unstable. And uh -huh. they suddenly aren't having the same amount of control as they're releasing the ball because that stability in their elbow is not there anymore. And again, it just over time, over time, over time. And it wasn't a trauma. It wasn't something that happened like they fell or, yeah, yeah. you know, like an ankle sprain often happens with more of a trauma. This is almost self-imposed. And you see it again. I see it a lot with baseball pitchers who started pitching at a high level and started throwing curves and things like that when they were probably a little too young. We're talking 11, 12, 13 years old, where, like you said, those ligaments are still remodeling. All the tissues are at that age. Yeah, you're not. Your bones aren't finished, so everything has to accommodate, right, to exactly. whatever you're doing to it. And with dancers, the challenge is typically in the anterior hip. Yes. You know, so labrum tears and that kind of thing um, are, are not uncommon in dancers, uh, and just hip instability generally, because a lot of mobility is required for the for the task. Yeah. So yeah, so so ligaments again are shaped by your activity, and then when you when you damage it, that also can can again change that stability of the joint and with a ligament like when a muscle is damaged the muscle is going to keep working on that area right like right. muscle like if it loses stability that muscle is going to contract a little bit more typically and if it scars mm -hmm. up it's going to contract a little bit more to create that stability back in that muscle and, and maybe over tighten it or whatever but basically that's got a self a self-regulating mechanism if you will mm -hmm. for a strain a sprain doesn't once that ligament right. is a certain length it's a certain length. That's that's what you got. And, the and that's the whole thing that I was saying before. With a muscle, you're going to have some healing. The muscle yes. will heal. It, it's it's got a ton of blood, you it's know, designed flow. It's designed to heal. Mm -hmm. Whereas the ligaments really aren't. They don't have that same blood supply to begin to heal as much as before, which is why when you do see a rupture, you know, or, you know, a grade rupture where it's 20%, 30%, whatever the percentage is, you rarely see on its own, the whole thing knit back together. You rarely see the scarring up of that. You know, yeah. it's just maybe, and I was going to ask you about this. If you've ever seen this, if you have something like that, where let's say of a teenager who is still remodeling and who does get a sprain, let's say a grade two, where a portion of it is torn. Would that be more likely because they are still developing, those tissues are remodeling, would that have a tendency to want to knit together? Whereas my tissue, that's not going to happen, not at 50. Well, the, the example that I'd use for that is actually my nephew um, mm -hmm. who tore his ACL and had some meniscus damage in his knee when he was 11, I'm thinking. Right. So, and, and had a, you know, he, so he, he didn't have much ligament left in there if he had any at all and, and missed his trouble. And, you know, he went on, uh, there's a couple things that are, he's limited in, uh, mm -hmm. but essentially his body accommodated to that really well. Mm -hmm. And he's extremely athletic. So there's that too, but he, he really accommodated to it as he grew up and he had, as far as I know, has had no knee issues. I mean, he might in, a, in the distant future. Right. Um, but, you know, it's been, 13, 12 years or something since then. Okay. And he's had no, no issues at all in spite of skiing and running and swimming and, you know, all kinds of different sports that he's, he's participated in. Right. So in some regards, it may be the muscles that have stabilized the joint. It may be that there was some healing that happened in that yeah. area or some yeah. scarring up that occurred at that young an age that yeah. can happen. And yeah. again, those tissues have what we talked about fascia. We talked about those tissues have so much fluid. They are so hydrated when you're young. Whereas as we get older, there is literally a change in the amount of elastin, collagen, ground substance, hyaluronic acid, everything changes. And we see our tissues do get a lot drier. So like I say, if I sprain my ankle right now, it's going to be a lot different than if uh, my son does, who at yes. 16, he's going to snap back no matter how bad of a sprain it is. He's going to snap back a lot faster than I would. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I think that's, I think that's kind of, what we're looking at there. 
when we start to talk about um, more specific sprains and strains, we'll, we'll talk too about how you then stabilize those joints, right? Because a lot mm -hmm. of it is if there is, an inst if, if there is an instability caused by the change in the ligament length, then we're looking at how do you stabilize that joint using the musculature. And that's a lot of the, of the theme of some of our next sessions as we go forward. Yeah. And, and it's going to require a lot more muscle work. Um, yes. you know, when we're talking about low back SI joint issues in order to stabilize that we need to work the entire area. We need to make sure that that's going to be strong enough to be stable, to yes. create that outer ring to provide, you know, uh, assistance to the inner portion. So okay. it's really at that point, you know, not necessarily working from the inside out, but occasionally we do have to work from the outside in to help stabilize that. Absolutely. Which is the weakest. So, so that makes, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then next week we'll talk specifically about, about um, ankle sprains and that'll yep. give you also some, you know, using an actual case study, we can talk about how we stabilize that and what you do and, you know, both, both from first aid through, through post rehab and through how you really get somebody back to full functioning um, when they're not, not don't have all of the ligament stability they could have. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's probably the one that most people are going to see besides yeah. SI joint ligaments. I'd say an ankle sprain is the one that you're probably going to see the most. Yeah. Uh, and it may be the one that you're going to have to happen to yourself because I've had that happen to me. So we'll talk about that next week. Uh, and again, today was a much shorter session for many reasons, including technical difficulties on our part. But I think we laid a good groundwork. I think we laid some groundwork for where we're going to go with this. So yeah. we can talk in a lot greater detail next week about going into that ankle sprain. And down the road, when we talk about SI joint dysfunction, we're definitely going to be covering this as well. Awesome. Yeah. So guys, thank you very much for joining us on our abbreviated session here of Moving Conversations. If you like what you hear, drop us a line at movingconvos at gmail.com. Uh, remember, you can always reach us there. You can reach out to us on our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Moving Convos uh, is what you look up on those things. Uh, if you like, really like what we're doing, subscribe, like, post, do all of that stuff for us. It's going to only help out. Uh, for us to get out there and to reach more people. So we really awesome. appreciate every time someone does that. And, you know, we'll see you guys next time.